Hey everyone, my name's Ali, and welcome or welcome back to my channel, Mindful Living. Today on my channel, I'm going to be answering all of your most asked container garden questions. With spring on the horizon, I thought it would be the perfect time to answer those frequently asked questions about growing in containers. If you're new here, I grow on my balcony every spring, summer, and fall, and I have quite a big container garden. I grow anywhere from 25 to 30 plants on my balcony every year, and I've experimented with growing quite a lot of different plants in containers, so I'm going to be sharing some of that knowledge with you guys today. Let's go ahead and get started with the video. So one of the big questions I tend to get is what grows best in containers? Obviously growing in containers is a lot different than growing in the ground, but there is actually quite a lot of plants that will thrive in containers. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys which ones I think are the best. So what grows best in partial shade? That means these plants will be receiving anywhere from two to four hours of sunshine a day. And plants that grow best in partial shade are things like leafy greens, different lettuces, arugula, bok choy, and spinach, along with mustard greens and Swiss chard. So any of these leafy greens are gonna do really well with limited sunlight. Plants that grow best in partial sun, so that's anything from four to six hours of sunshine a day, are going to be plants like kale, beets, peas, broccoli, carrots, and turnip. So these plants will still thrive in partial sun and they don't need to be put into full sun. They will actually do better if you leave them in an area that gets a bit of sunshine along with a bit of shade. Plants that grow best in full sun, which is anywhere from six to eight hours of sunshine a day, are going to be plants like tomatoes, eggplant, strawberries, cucumber, peppers, so that's anything from banana peppers to bell peppers to jalapeno peppers, zucchini, squash, and basil. All of these plants love lots of sunshine, so make sure to leave them in an area that's getting at least six hours a day. Okay, so now that we know which plants grow best in containers, another common question I get is when to start your seeds. I have a whole video on my channel about how I start my seeds indoors. I'll leave a link to that here in case you wanna go and check that out because I do go in more detail on how I care for my seeds. Basically, when you're starting your own seeds indoors, you want to make sure to check the frost date for your area so you're able to transition them outside at the correct time. Also, you want to check how long it's going to take for your seed to sprout. This is always provided for you on the package, as some seeds take anywhere from 15 to 20 days to sprout, and other seeds are going to sprout in just a couple days. So it's really important to check this and make sure you're sowing your seeds at the correct time. I always use a grow light when growing indoors. Your seedlings are going to need a grow light in order to grow properly. Having them in front of a window or something like that is not going to work for seedlings. They do need enough sunlight and that's about 15 hours a day when they are first starting to grow. Also, you want to make sure once your seedlings have gotten to the correct size and you're ready to move them outside, you need to do a process called hardening off. And I do this for a couple days, and that just means you're transitioning your seedlings outside for a few hours a day. Don't put them in direct sunlight at first. That's another important thing to keep in mind. You don't want to move them outside and put them in direct sunlight, as that will actually shock your plant and you have a good chance that your plant will actually die. And this is because because we've been growing it inside in a controlled environment under the grow light. So that is why you need to do the process of hardening off your plants, just getting them used to the new environment before you put them outside permanently. Okay, so the next question you guys tend to ask me a lot in the comments is what size container to use for your plant? I think this is the biggest mistake I often see when people are growing in containers is they can sometimes not be using the right size container for the plant. It really does matter which size container you are using for which plant. If you're not growing in the right size container, it can really stunt the growth of the plant. And if it is a plant that's going to produce, let's say peppers or tomatoes and things like that, your plant is not going to produce as much and it may not produce at all if you do not have it in the right size container. 
So plants like spinach and lettuce, they will grow really well in a shallow container. You don't need a very deep container for these type of plants because their roots grow really shallow. So any of your leafy greens like lettuces, arugula, spinach, they do really well in a smaller shallow container. I find that herbs also do not need a lot of root space, so I grow things like basil, parsley, rosemary in a shallow container as well. You can also grow beets and turnips in a more shallow container, and that's because they are a root vegetable, so they don't need as much space either. Plants that do well in a more medium to large size container is plants like kale. I find that this grows really well in a medium size along with green beans. These are my bush beans, so they are more compact variety, and they grow really well in a 12 to 14 inch medium size container. The same goes for banana peppers, bell peppers, basically any type of pepper will do pretty well in a medium size container like this. All of mine produced really well for me this year and had tons of peppers growing on them. A few other plants that grow well in this size are things like peas or snap peas and carrots. Plants that grow best in a fairly large size container would be Roma tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, basically any type of tomato. You want to grow these plants in as big of a container as you possibly can. I use my largest size containers, which can be anywhere from 15 to 20 inches wide. Especially for cherry tomatoes, as you guys can see here, this cherry tomato got to be 6 feet tall this year, so it definitely required a really big container. And I did have to stake my cherry tomato down the middle here, and that's just to provide the plant with a little bit of extra support so it doesn't topple over. So keep in mind, you may have to do that with some of your larger plants. Blackberry bushes also require a really large size container. My plant got massive this year, and I am using the biggest size container I have for this plant. And another plant that needs tons of room to grow successfully is eggplant. I've grown eggplant every year in my garden, and it definitely is one of my biggest plants. Okay, so now that you know what plants to put in what size containers, the next question I get often is what type of soil you should use in your container garden. I recommend you use an organic potting soil for all of your containers. I like to use Pro Mix vegetable and herb mix, or I have also used golf green organic potting soil in my containers. For me, it's really important that the soil I'm growing in is organic. I don't use any pesticides or chemicals on my plants as well. I also make sure to use organic fertilizer on all of my plants. I use a slow release organic fertilizer by golf green and that helps keep my plants growing really lush and green throughout the season. I typically fertilize my garden every three to four weeks depending on how my plants are doing. One important thing to know is you should never be using garden soil or any dirt and soil from your garden. That is definitely too heavy for you to grow in a container. Potting soil is specially formulated to grow well in containers. It gives your plants the right amount of moisture, oxygen, and nutrients. So make sure you're using a high quality potting soil for all of your plants. Okay, so the last question I'm going to answer in this video is how often should you be watering your plants? Basically, I water my plants almost every day in the summertime and sometimes leading into the fall. And this will depend on your climate, of course. So make sure you are checking on your plants a couple times a day. I recommend you water in the morning or in the evening after the sun has gone down. You can also simply use the two finger test to check on your plants as well. Simply stick your two fingers into the container and see if the plant feels dry. If it does, you need to go ahead and water. If it still feels moist, you can leave it. I also have a three-way meter like this, which measures the light and the moisture in my soil. So I often will put this into the container a little deeper down to see if my plants need more water. I recommend picking one of these gadgets up as it does make your life a lot easier if you are growing in containers. 
I also fill the self-watering bulbs with water and these are for the days that I know I'm not going to get out to my garden. Maybe I'm working or I'm gone away for the weekend, something like that. So when your soil starts to dry out, this will slowly release water to the plant and it basically ensures that your soil never dries out completely. So these are also really great to have in your garden as well. Okay, so that's it for this video today. I hope I answered all of your guys' container garden questions. If I missed any, make sure to leave me a comment down below. If you liked this video today, I hope you will give me a thumbs up, hit the red subscribe button. It really does help to support me and the growth of my channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you in my next one.